say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in the farmer's kitchen, in town farmer's country kitchen. cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Rose Farm Supply, family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. House Warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're in our outdoor kitchen. Yes, With we is. cowgirl. <laughs> you know what? So many people are responding to our cowboy cooking segments, and we absolutely love cooking outside because when you cook like this, everything has that outdoor flavor. You have the smoke that accidentally rolls in. You might have a bug that lands in there. Yummy. It just makes everything a little bit better. Chewier. But you know what? Here's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to save you the potential cowboy cook out there, $17.3 million. Wow, how are you doing that? It's easy. If you were a real cowboy, you would have to have at least 1,570 head of cattle. Then you'd have to have at least 72 horses. Then you have to have all the saddles. Then you have to have a barn to keep the horses in. You have to feed them hay. Well, in order to have cowboy cooking, I just took out the cattle and the horses and what we have is the same taste with a couple shortcuts. You're smart. So I just saved each and every one of you. Now, if you happen to be a real cowboy, go ahead and do your thing, and God bless you to be out there on the range. I wish I was there. I really do. Don't you wish for the I old do. days? That'd be fun. I would like that. It's hard work. Those guys are still out there wearing themselves out, and this is actually the way they still cook when they get the chance when they're on the drive. Now, that being said, on this edition of Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, we're gonna look at the old cookbook here. And on page seven, we have one of our favorites. But wait a minute, it wouldn't be a cowboy cooking segment if we didn't have a cowboy cooking open venison stew. Now, as you can see, we've already got our fire going. I've got six cups of water in my lodge cookware out there hanging over the fire. And this is ubiquitous. You can find it anywhere, and we use it because it's absolutely wonderful. It is. And it's easy to find just about everywhere. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this. If you use the canned venison as opposed to venison that you cut up, which is just fine, it's gonna take your whole process a lot less longer to cook because that's already cooked and it's already soft. I'm going to get up, go ahead and get our vegetables going. Again, I've got our water already getting nice and hot. All right. I'm going to dump all my vegetables in here. Get them going. Nikki's going to bring me the ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and put my beef broth in there as well. And 
And again, whether it's frozen or whether it's canned, we got our venison. I just absolutely love it like this. All right, and I'll let you do the... How much you want? Well, give me three heaping and maybe with just a little plus. Red currant jelly, which absolutely just adds a whole lot. Is that enough? Yeah, you could do one more just for good measure, which adds a lot of flavor. All right, this is a Christman Mill. It's a nice red wine. I'm gonna actually put about a half a cup in there. That red wine with the currant jelly and the bouillon just is magic. All those flavors when they come together. I'm gonna come back with my flavor. I'm gonna put just across the top of that some of my Tonys. However much salt or pepper you like, it's up to you. I like just a tad of each. We're gonna let that get comfortable. Now, how about that? We're well on our way to having dinner. Now, this is gonna obviously come to a nice boil. Keep a watch on it. If you need to add more water, add more water as you go along. Add more seasoning, taste. Don't be afraid to taste as you go along. Add what you need. Now, you don't have to be a classically trained chef to be a wonderful cook. Now, most of our grandparents that we grew up cooking, your grandmother, your grandfather, mm -hmm. wonderful cooks. Right. How did they learn that? Things that were passed down to them from other people. And that's what we do as we go along here. Right now, let's take a break. In a minute, we're gonna come back and start some biscuits. We're gonna visit our friends at Weisenberger Mill and get some biscuit mix to take some of the guesswork out of it. Yeah, but first stuff. up, you know, we've been kind of keeping tabs on our bees and I had the boys over, the bee dudes over just the other day, found out that my beehives were very healthy. Why is that? We're lucky, we're very fortunate. We just happen to be in a place that they like. There's plenty of food for them. There's plenty of pollen for them to gather. They made it through the winter. They had plenty of honey. Thank goodness, I don't know what happened, but they, they made it through the winter. A lot of people didn't. We had so many bees that it was time to split the hive. And you wanna know what that's all about? Let's go find out right now. Jay, Bee Dude's back. Alan's standing right over there. You know, we've been out of uniform. Yes, you we You finally are conforming <laughs> to the to the standards of, of the uh, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Bee Dude. There's a, there's a beehive right behind you. I don't know if you know. Yep. We're not the least bit perturbed. Nice bunch of bees. Doesn't happen every time, though, does it? No. Now, usually in the springtime, they get really aggressive. I had a talk with them. They seem to be fairly calm. Well, maybe you could talk with some I got. <laughs> well, we are very fortunate. We talked about the fact that our, my bees made it through the winter. Mm -hmm. They're thriving. They're bringing pollen in. Uh, we looked at it the other day. Everything's good to go. But you said there's something that we need to do, and that is... Split the box. Split the box. Yep. Meaning take the half the population of bees somewhere else. Not quite half, but uh, we are going to take quite a bit out mm -hmm. of them and give them a chance. I did get a, a queen. We do have a queen stick in the new box. So it makes it a lot faster. Let's talk about that. You say you buy a new queen, you can go to, to dance right now down here and when he gets them in. Right. You buy a queen so you can take these fellows over here and start a new hive. You can't take this queen and take them out of this box and put them in another box and expect them to take her in. It won't happen. Everybody's got to have the same smell, so we're going to try that. So, you're gonna, so you can give them a different scent. Now, yeah. can we take a look at that queen? Where's that queen? They've got a couple old friends with them to help them out. And there's some, what is that in the There's plug? candy. It's uh, white candy they put in there. Today we're gonna pull candy out after I spray her down and spray the bees that we're taking out of the box and we're gonna put them all together. And, and see we're how like, they... hey, we're all buds because we smell like vanilla. Everybody smells the same and that's the main thing. So, we're gonna split this hive. You've got another box set up right down the way here. It's what, 50, 60 feet, maybe even more, 100 feet? Yep, 60 feet. They recommend at least 50. Right. to keep the bees from going that you're taking out going back to the original box. Now the bees we're taking out is house bees. What's a house bee? House bee is the ones that maintain inside the box mm -hmm. until they, you could say, graduate and move out to start collecting pollen. And what is the lifespan of a bee? How long does a bee typically live? People say six weeks. Mm -hmm. And I believe six weeks after they hit the field. People say they wear themselves out or they die of the work of bringing backwards and forwards. Older people say they wear their wings out. So they say six weeks. So that's not a very long lifespan. No, that's the reason why she can lay up to 2,000 eggs a day, if not more. Wow to keep the population going and keep everybody fed. Unbelievable. There is so much to this beekeeping. It's so fascinating. And you do this all the time. And you say you still learn every day. Yes, I do. I've what's, been, what's something you've learned recently that you didn't know? I had a boy tell me one time that he takes a towel in the wintertime and puts between his inner cover and his top 
to keep them warm through the winter time and any moisture inside that box, the towel absorbs it. Said he's never lost a hive. Wow. Yes. Now, you all shamed me into it. You said, it's Farmer, it's time to suit up. Well, you know they're gentle. I know they're gentle. We're standing right here. I mean, they ain't going to bother you. I mean, the worst thing you can do is get stung. But I've, these guys, I think, that, like you say, the more you're around them, the more they accept you, unless they're an evil bunch. Main thing is move slow. Yeah. The slower you move, the better off you are. All right, let's suit up. I'm going to need help. Okay. I'm suited up. This is cool. You know what? I was a little bit shy about doing this because I had been zinged before when I wasn't supposed to get zinged. There's times when I'm going to have to check them. You guys, you know, you're going to kind of, I'm, I got training wheels. You're going to kick training wheels off. Oh, yeah. Say, nice. Farmer, uh, you're on your own, dude. So we're going to split this half. Yep. Just kind of tell us what you're doing as we go along. Okay. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is locate the queen that's in the box. Mm -hmm. She's got to stay in the box. I don't personally like taking them from the box that she's originally in. Mm -hmm. So once we locate her, put her to the side, knowing that she can't get on another frame, then we're gonna start pulling frames out. It's got plenty of bees on it and brood hatching, plus locate eggs, just in case they don't accept this queen. Gotcha. Always have a backup. All right, would you say you're probably at the, one of the most critical points right here, right now? Yeah, definitely. If you don't get that bees in that box to accept this queen, then you've got a major problem. They know this is a queen. Does she give off a pheromone? She does a pheromone, and she does a clicking sound. Now, are they liking her or hating her right now? Well, what they're after right now, they're mostly after those workers. Their workers really get them stirred up that's in there with the queen. Really? So we're fixing to calm them down. Get them all smelling the same? Get them all smelling the same. Then, in theory, you should be able to turn the queen loose. Mm -hmm. So this is just watered down vanilla extracts gotcha. is what I use and I'm gonna squirt the queen and the bees in this little container and every frame and every bee inside that box. And it's just gonna be a light mist. I'm trying to get as much of that out as possible. There she is. She's the first one out. Everybody's confused. Everybody's worried about cleaning off. Everybody's got the same smell. Now, how do you know, how long does it take you to figure out that, okay, they've accepted her and things are going well? Usually seven days from the time she releases, you go back seven days later and check her, see if she started laying. She usually starts landing within seven days. Hmm. Now, what's to keep these bees from flying off, getting some pollen and going back to that box? Now, I'm not saying that some of them's not gonna go out and go straight to that box. But since everybody's got the same smell, a lot of times they won't accept them since they've got a different smell. Uh -huh. Now, what do you do with this part right here? You just Put that feeder on and put that sugar water on, which is 10 pounds for five quarts of water. Give them a little bit of extra jump. Thank you so much, bee dude, bee dude, the bee dudes. You've made this an interesting year and a half and I can't wait to see when we actually come up here to my hive and we sling some honey at them. It's coming, That's just the give them up. time. Thank you very much. Hey, if you don't know where we are, you should. This is Weisenberger Mill right here on the Scott County line. Beautiful scenery, but even better, vittles. We're going to walk inside and get some supplies. How you doing? What's going on, man? Not you know much. why we're here. Yeah, well, you get some things. We got to load up. Let's, let's do it. We're please. getting ready to do a cowboy cooking segment. Okay. Which people are loving that for some reason or other. Yeah. I got to put that big cowboy hat and get my <laughs> gun out now because there's Indians around. That's, that's what makes it good, isn't it? All right, I'll tell you what. what we're going to need We're gonna need some of your biscuit mix. Want some biscuits? Need some biscuit mix. Okay. We're probably going to be doing some more pizzas here for a long. All righty. And you know it's fishing season. It is. And it's time. You need some fish batter and, and some you need some hush puppies. And some, yeah, yeah, hush puppies right there. If you're going to do fish, you got to do hush puppies with. You know what? I'm going to take one more biscuit mix. Cause, All right, let's do that. Because I'm going to do more than one. And uh, it seems to me like we've talked somebody into being on the show here for a long. Who's that? I think so. I think I'm coming out there. Who else? My mother. Uh -huh. She's going to make some biscuits and show people how it's done. I'm going to show people how you can make them pretty easy. And she's... I've heard is the biscuit queen. She is. She is. Blue ribbon winner. Blue ribbon hey, winner. That's right. All right. This will keep us going for another week All or right, so. We put that in a bag for you? No. I'm All just going to pack it on up. That works out good. Good seeing you, man. see you, too. All right. I'll see you in a few weeks. All right.
All right, you talk about eating local. We got deer from Kentucky right, right up on the hill. Our deer. We just stopped by Weisenberger's. Now, those guys are pure Kentucky, generation after generation after generation. Good people. Good people. We saved ourselves a step or two. We got their mix. Now, I talked to Philip. He said he prefers, now it calls for water, but he said he prefers the buttermilk, and I do too. They have, all their mixes have been, they've worked with them for years. We use a third of a cup of buttermilk. Gives it that rich, yummy flavor. Let's go ahead and pull that in there. And that's it, right? That's it, mix it up, knead it out, and we're gonna take our little lodge pan over there that's just made for biscuits. All right, now you can go ahead and bring the pan up here if you'd like. What do you think? Mm-hmm, a spoonful in each. We're doing an experiment. Now you cook these in a hot oven. Normally you take these and knead them out, put them in the oven at about 450 for about 12 minutes. They look good. All right, let's put them on the hot fire. And we're gonna set those right over that hot fire. And now, in the blink of an eye, we're gonna bring in Craig Cottle to give us some survival tips. If you're out there all by yourself in the woods and happen to get lost, hey, or the zombie apocalypse comes, here's Craig to give us a few tips. Craig Cottle is back. Hey Tim, good to see you again, man. Tell us who, who you're with. Nature Reliance School. Now, if you will, uh, every now and then we're going to drop in a, a few segments and talk about survival skills. Anything to do with survival, whether you're lost out in the middle of the woods or the zombie apocalypse is upon us. We, you know, who knows in this world what could happen tomorrow? Right. We just don't know. But uh, today, one of the things that is kind of right there in front of us, it doesn't take a special tool for this, is mindset. Meaning? We try, when we approach the subject of preparedness and survival, we look at it from three main ways. Mindset, tactics and techniques, and then gear. What we found through research and what's been proven is that if you have the right mindset, you can survive a lot of stuff. You don't have to have gear, you don't have to have good technique. Mindset, first off, is when, if you're going to go outside, you need to, number one, number one rule, tell somebody where you're going and when you expect to return. And in that manner, if someone uh, realizes that you've been out, then they can notify authorities and get somebody to you. And at least they've got a reference point. Exactly. We Instead know, of, I don't know where this person is, I don't know how long they've been gone, I don't know what kind of gear they had or anything of that nature. And so that, that is number, that's number one for us. That's what we try to encourage people to do. And secondly, if you have the right mindset, then you can survive a lot of stuff. And I mean, in, you embrace the hard part of survival. You tell yourself you're gonna live. There's nothing stopping you from living. Some of the things that we encourage people to do, and you've seen these in movies too, is you know, have a memento of somebody you care about, have something that you have a purpose to live for. And like an example, I have little ties at my daughter. She's now 19 when she made me six or seven years old. That's all on all my zip ties on my pack. That's just a remembrance of her. If I'm ever out and I've got my pack with me, then I've got a remembrance of why I want to get back home. Because there's so many scenarios. You know, there's beautiful country in in, in Kentucky, mm -hmm. vast areas. You know, you're down around the natural uh, bridge area and uh, the Danny Boone National Forest, we got these vast areas where you could easily fall, go off a cliff, easy, break a limb, be in one spot. Mm -hmm. And, and you mindset. can do that on a farm. I mean, sure. you can do that. I mean, you can do on a 300-acre farm or a 100 or 50-acre farm, for that matter. I mean, if you're in the back of a farm, 50 acres, for example, and you fall off the tractor and you're injured, you might be bleeding. For example, uh, if your wife or whoever thinks of you realizes you've been gone two hours longer than you should be, well, maybe she needs to get on the radio or telephone and holler at you or something. First and foremost, it's not something you hold in your hand, but it's right. something that's there. First you hold in your heart and in your mind. I'm going to get through this. That is, in, and, that's a very important, if not the most important. Here's a picture thing. of my wife or kid, and here's the reason why I'm going to make this through. That's it. That's it exactly. Because if you have that strong mindset, that maintains a lot of things. It keeps you going in a lot of different ways. The mind is a very powerful thing, and it can control the body if you allow it to. Uh, obviously, environmental factors play a key there, but your mind can, if you allow yourself, your mind can say, "I'm warmer than I think I am," kind of situation or uh, I'm lost and I can calm myself down. Because it's when you're lost and you're scared and you allow your mind to, to get a hold of yourself, then you, things get out of hand. You know, a lot of people go through traumatic experiences. I actually was in a motorcycle wreck. A lot of people ask me on this show, they make comments, well, what would you do to your arm? I ripped this arm off. My mindset was immediately, 
fix it. Of course, the Marine Corps had yeah. a lot to do with that. Yeah. And there was blood flow. I didn't know where it was coming from. Still had my helmet on. I finally found where that was, and I right. grabbed a hold of that area that was bleeding and held on. Because the Marine Corps oh, wow. told me, stop the bleeding. Right. Stop the bleeding. That's stuck in my mind. So mindset That's is mindset right Saved there. my life. Yeah, the military is fantastic at teaching those type of simple. It's not that they're tech, not technically sound. They're very technically sound, but they teach it in a way that it's simple so that when you're under stress, you can handle that situation. And that's a, that's a perfect example right there. Tell me some things coming up that we're going to talk about, just quick and easy tips that we'll have in the future that'll help. Uh, we'll talk out. about techniques and tactics, some things to do, consider how to set your priorities when you're out. And then we'll also take a look at gear too. Gotcha. Look forward to seeing you. Yeah, again. sounds great. Thank you very much. Now, these are going to be some serious cat head biscuits. Look how they're already rising. That is going to be absolutely yummy. Now I'm going to complete my oven. Put this right over top of it and let them roll. Okay, I'm going to put my thickener in here. Mix that up. As that cooks in there, that'll continue to thicken up. And we're well on our way. And some good vittles. All right, I cheated a minute ago. I checked this, look at that, nice and fluffy. Done all the way through. That is the perfect biscuit. Look at that, just right on the bottom. Now I beat that one up pretty big because I was checking it to make sure if it was done. Those are perfect. I'm gonna take those and set them aside. Now we scooped up our biscuits, which turned out absolutely wonderful. Now would you scoop us out some venison stew? I will. I thought you might. Just use that old cup we had flour in. Now, you know, as you go along, as you cook, check it every 20 minutes or so and add a little, might need a little bit of this, might need a little bit of that. All right, we've scooped it up. You want the first bite? You know, I'll check the vegetables. They're just about done. How's it? A hot. <laughs> no, good. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm gonna have me a Wilden Burger biscuit. That's good. Mm -hmm. It's nothing quite like cooking outside. What do you think? That's really good. That's really good. Check out our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page. It's going to tell you where we're going to be, what we're going to do. Keep up to date with what we're doing. TimFarmer'sCountryKitchen.com. You can check out recipes we've had in the past, segments you might not have seen. And you know what? we got a lot of fun stuff coming up. You know, the sheep and lamb folks gave us a leg of lamb the other day. Next week, we're going to cook up your special potato dish. As we put that underneath the lamb on the big okay. green egg. If you've seen us cooking on the big green egg and always wanted to try some food off of there, uh, go to House Warmings on June, June 21st. The 21st. I think it's from 10 to 3. Check out on our Facebook page. You can try some things that are actually made on the big green egg. We're going to make our smoky mac and cheese with Kentucky beer cheese. And it's a, good. Right, a lot of people cook in there that day too, all kinds of stuff. Again, check out our Facebook page for more details. Till next week, it's all about good times, good friends. And good eats. Right here on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. See you next week. Another new bite. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502 319 0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Chrisman Mill Vineyards, Good Foods Co-op, Kinco Farm Fence Supplies, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Polecat Custom Smokers, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, Weisenberger Mill, and Tim Farmer Productions. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life.
Harvest Energy Solutions, Harvest Cabins, when you absolutely have to get away.